let me show you something. This electric scooter has a fingerprint sensor. You start it by putting your finger right there and you're good to go. This Sunra Miku Super to one of you. And when I say this Sunra Miku Super, I do mean this exact bike, which my bottom has sat on. This bike could be yours. Read the description box below and find out how you can win. Right, now let me show you around. It's a very funky looking bike, the Miku Super. I love the floating seat design, so it's all hollowed out under here, and that makes it look like almost nothing else on the market. It's got a slightly naked bike look to it, so there's not much in the way of fairing, there's no windscreen, but there are lots of really cool details scattered all around the bike. For example, this light up badge on the side, which I've never seen on another bike before. Really love this front headlight cluster, which looks tremendous. And also a nice big TFT screen, which gives you all the information you could ever need. That fingerprint sensor I mentioned earlier, not only starts the bike, it also opens up a storage compartment. Hold your finger on it and it pops open to reveal a nice area for keeping your mobile phone, your wallet, a small man bag perhaps, and it also has a USB port, which is an underrated feature in a bike. That's great for charging a mobile phone or a sat nav, for example, so very handy. Underneath that storage compartment is where you'll find this bike's removable batteries. I'm gonna talk more about that later on. But before that, let me talk you through the various features around the bike. So on the left handlebar, you've got your flashes for telling people to move out the way. You've also got hazard lights, indicators, which do not self cancel. You've got to actually move it back to the zero very painstakingly. That could become difficult with cold fingers in the winter. You've got a horn. And on the right hand side, you've got a standard headlight control. You've got P for parking and a mode button that switches between slow, medium and slightly quicker than medium. And you've also got this R button, which is a reverse gear. Bet you haven't seen that before on a bike. Well, what it does is you push R and then twist the, whoop, that's not reverse. <laughs> push R, twist the uh, old throttle and it goes backwards. Unfortunately, it's a bit too quick. It seems to go one speed and that's fast, which is a little bit too out of control for my liking. And I'm not actually sure you need a reverse gear given the fact that the bike is super light. But anyway, let's go forward again. I'm going backwards. Obviously nothing in this world is perfect and there are a few areas for improvement on the Miku Super. First of all, there is no center stand and the side stand leaves the bike a bit too vertical for my liking. That means if someone accidentally bumps into it, it's very easy to knock over. <sighs> Had the heart going there for a second. The next thing I'm not a massive fan of is the charging situation. So down here, I've got the charging cable and you'd think that they gave you enough space in the storage compartment for the charger, but it's a bit too big to fit, which means it's gonna be quite difficult to carry this around with you. You've always got to carry this in a backpack, for example, to make sure you don't get stranded if you go beyond the bike's claimed range. There's another slight problem with the charger, and that is it's not water resistant, which means when you're charging up outdoors, that could get wet. That means you need a nice long extension cable to keep this in the dry. Incidentally, the other end of the charger is not your typical type one or type two plug. That means you can't charge this bike at a typical electric car charging point. Now, let me show you the removable batteries because those are a really cool feature, but they're not without their problems. So, underneath here, you open that up, you pop that out. I'll go around the back of the bike, make it a bit easier. Oh, I think you have to turn off the isolators so you don't get electrocuted. <laughs> then you, this is all being done in real time, by the way. You turn that blue thing, you turn this other blue thing, remove the cables. I'll do one at a time. Okay, tuck that out of the way, pull that, and that's one battery. Very heavy. Um, and then you go back in for the second battery. Oh, but well, that's locked itself, so now I need to use my fingerprint to unlock the storage compartment. Fingerprint, fingerprint. Oh no, I've turned off the isolator and I've disconnected the battery, which means that won't open anymore. So now I need the key again, which is luckily in my back pocket. Turn that, unlock that, drop the key. Then 
turn that thing, tuck that out of the way, pull that that way. Now the cables are in the way. Oh, there we go. And now we have the removable batteries, which let me tell you, are not the lightest in the world. It's actually very heavy. So it's a bit of a faff. I think you do kind of have to carry these into your house to charge them up. And because it's so heavy, it's not going to be for everyone. Sunra say the Miku Super can recharge in four hours with both batteries connected to the bike. Charge times are longer when charging the batteries individually and it isn't exactly convenient as you'll have to set a timer to remind you when to put the second battery on the charger. A single larger battery would have been a more elegant solution. One really cool feature about the Miku Super is the app which has a load of features. You can lock or unlock it, you can turn the ignition on and off, you can open the storage compartment, just like that, and you can mute it to stop it making all kinds of weird noises. Speaking of weird noises, it also has an alarm system. You can demonstrate that with either the app or the key. I'm gonna use the key in this case, so I'll lock it, and then I'll pretend I'm a thief who's come along with a screwdriver, for example, to try and make off with the bike. That's me stealing it. And then it gives me a few warning beeps to say, get away from me, before it goes completely nuts. Quite handy. And you can stop that with either the key or the app. Job done.